in Salesforce development, there are two ways of managing code, org development and package development. Org development is the idea of keeping all code inside an individual Salesforce organization. In this model, all Apex code, custom fields, and any other metadata are all tracked inside the org. This is sometimes referred to as happy soup. This is a great way of developing Salesforce software. And it is also what most developers are familiar with. But using this approach can lead to issues with distributing to more than one production org and managing dependencies. To circumvent this, we can organize features inside of packages. With the package development model, we can distribute our code as is to many orgs. Packages come in flavors like managed packages from the app exchange and unlocked packages. We are going to dive into unlocked packages as they are a great way of segmenting feature sets into individual packages. Before we get started, we'll need a few boxes checked. First, ensure you have the SF CLI installed. Additionally, you will need a dev hub org to link these packages to. If you don't have a dev hub, you can go to developer.salesforce.com, create a new org, then inside of setup, dev hub, enable dev hub and unlocked packages. Then you can authenticate your dev hub with the following command. Now that you're authenticated, it's time to write some code. We need a project to store this code. My favorite way of performing this is using the template I built to make a new repo, then pull the repo into my local machine. Then you can create your package with the following command, where you pass in a package name, tell it where the package code lives with the path flag, and specify that we are using an unlocked package. Additionally, we can see these details inside the SFDX project JSON. This is a file that showcases the package name, version name, version number, and version description. We can also add additional fields like release notes URL to showcase the patch notes. We also need a place to do some of this customization. We can use a scratch org to develop and make the customizations as needed. Using the following command, we can create a scratch org and then open using this one. Then we can add any customizations needed. This can be in the form of custom fields, Apex, or any other Salesforce related metadata. For Apex classes, we can create them like usual. Create an Apex class and some accompanying test code and we're good to go. But you'll notice that we have a custom field that isn't in our package. With org development, we could use change sets to deploy and manage these custom fields. But that's not an option in package development. To get this field metadata inside our package, we need to create a manifest slash package.xml, add the definition under the custom field, and retrieve the changes from the org. Now that we have all of the metadata we want to distribute, let's bundle this into a package version. We can use the following command to create a new package. We pass in the reference to the package name in either a name or ID with the package flag. We specify that we don't want a password with the X flag, but if we did want a password, we could use dash K followed by the password. One of these two flags is required. And we can keep the command open using the wait flag to prevent the need from pulling Salesforce with additional commands. We can then use the URL in the output or take the ID and use the following command to install the package inside our sandbox or scratch org. The package created is a beta package. This is useful for testing in a sandbox, but cannot be installed in production orgs. We can create another package that specifies the dash C flag. We need to use this flag to get test coverage. We can then check the code coverage of our package using the following command. Since our test coverage is met, it is time to promote our package. We can get a production ready package by using the following command. And once the package is ready, we can install this package inside our production org. To make additional changes after the promotion, we need to increment the version number. This is because we can only promote one package per version number. Inside the SFDX project JSON, we can see the project versions. We can increment the version number field where the first number is the major version, second minor, and the third is a patch. Incrementing any of these will suffice. We can then run the same command to make a new version. And that's everything you need to get started with unlocked packages.